Hi everyone. Um, yes, thanks for joining us today at another live at Nomad States Co. My name is Lena. I'm the community manager for States, and I will introduce to you today Mark, which is uh, yeah the founder of Nomad States Co. And uh, I'm very, very happy to be here today with him and just talk about what he does and. Um, He's a nomad himself, so it will be super interesting for all of us. And um, yeah, if you guys are new to Nomad Stays, um, we are a booking platform um, for um, yeah accommodations for nomads, digital nomads and remote workers. And just for you to explore um, while working from everywhere, we have stays for that. And yeah, if you want to check it out, it's nomadstays.co. Um, you can find all the states there and go explore the world. And if you're not a member yet, you can just join us for free. And yes, so I'm just waiting for Mark to arrive and then we'll start into the chat. So we were doing... Uh, lives every week um we will do lives with meet the team like we do now and he's just joining so you don't want to miss it next time there he is hi mark hi lena how are you good how are you started but it just goes bang 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 <laughs> wow so much to do so much energy here in europe at the moment it's, it's wonderful yeah europe tell us where you are where are you exactly at the moment um well uh, today i'm working from um our home office uh, mm -hmm. which is on a, a jet i guess it's a um, farm stay um in the forest and the, the farm stay has got about 20 hectares and we're in the french alps Oh, wow, nice. So we're, we're covered in snow outside, uh, beautiful um, clear skies. Uh, it was really nice um, watching the stars last night through the, the, you know, the, the window light and up in the lost bedroom sort of thing. Uh, really beautiful part of the world, particularly at the moment. Uh, and as you can see, really good internet and a great <laughs> it is, yeah. the business with, apart from travelling around and enjoying. Great, great. Uh, so... Uh, I was introducing you a little bit at the beginning, but maybe you want to do it yourself as well. Just uh, say who you are, uh, where you come from, what do you do? <laughs> well, I, I guess the accent gives it away a little bit. I am Australian. <laughs> um, I am Mark Phillips. I'm the founder of Nomad Stays. Uh, I'm dialing in from one of our other accounts today, Business in Bare Feet, which is our, um, is our uh, startup mentoring business that uh, has been running for a number of years now. But, uh, yeah... I uh, brought Nomad Stays over from Australia to Europe uh, nearly two years ago now. I uh, brought the idea here. We sort of built it last year and we launched it about 12 months ago now. Uh, it's going really nicely. It's uh, growing quite strongly, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> Things are uh, quite busy. But, um, yes, I'm, uh, I've been travelling world, the world a lot. Uh, I've run a few... Um, created a few uh, international travel businesses in the past and I've also worked a lot in the tech industry uh, working largely the big end of town um, you know large contracts uh, large projects uh, government and enterprise level for people like Apple and Microsoft and, and so forth and those those companies have given me great training uh, great exposure great um, a, a great lifestyle, I guess. Um, it also took me around the world. Um, so I've, I've been lucky enough to travel over a hundred countries now. Um, can't, wow. Can't get enough of traveling. In fact, uh, six years ago, uh, Linda, uh, my co-founder and I and partner um, and myself and, and our dog, uh, we all decided we would go on the road nomading full time. So we, we started off doing the van life stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, it's it started in an in a unusual way. We, we had, um, we're in the process, we'd sold off our Australian houses and we were renting a property in a 
beautiful part of Australia called Noosa, up in the Noosa hinterland. And um, we were there for a, a couple of years, and uh, the landlord said, actually, you know, I actually want to move back into the house and, and, and bring my, my family back there, so we're going to finish the, the rent a little bit earlier than what, what you thought. Um, and we said, that's okay. We, um, we'll just use the opportunity to go exploring. So literally, we jumped in the car uh, with our pets on the roof, van life, uh, and a motorbike, because we actually we went one on the motorbike, one in the car, and we started travelling around Australia. Oh, wow. And then we would um, have to find an airport and fly off to somewhere else to do some business. That's nice. And for how long did you do that? We did that um, for about three or four, probably three years. Um, and then, uh, you know, I was doing my, my consulting business and, and I did about <laughs> 10 companies that do other bits and pieces. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, we, we help a lot of startups. We help a lot of um, businesses uh, grow globally. Um, it's using a combination of technology, it's, it's market introductions into places, and I was, I was helping a lot of clients, and um, so, you know, I'd be, I'd be in Adelaide, and then I'd have to fly from Townsville, and then back to Perth, and then up to Darwin. Uh, Microsoft approached me and said, would you be a brand ambassador for a while? So, um, that was nice, because they would fly me around to the countryside to introduce me to great technology projects, usually out in the bush, because we're focusing on the regional areas. And then the Australian government approached me and said, listen, um, we're trying to grow startups, uh, and we, we have a problem with people in the country. So would you like a um, part-time contract to go around about a third of Australia, just drive around a third of Australia, visit all the startup incubators and accelerators and try and get them uh, to, to apply for all these government funds. Nice. So that was a fun job, travelling uh, a third of Australia and, and handing out government money. It's always always nice to uh, be involved with that. A little bit more complicated than that. But um, I guess after advising and helping startups for a long time, um, you, know, you, you can't sit back and... Yeah. All the time. You've got to jump over the, over the hurdle again and get back into business yourself. Um, I was actually talking to some investors yesterday and I was, it was very similar backgrounds to myself here in France. And I said, listen, you know, advising is great, but sometimes you just want to get in and do stuff yourself. And they all started nodding and said, yeah, they, <laughs> they've got the hankering to build up another company. Um, I guess it's in your blood. Um, could, you, could you speak a little louder maybe? I can barely hear you. That microphone up a little bit higher. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, so, uh, go ahead. Um, so you said you have a couple of businesses yourself for also other nomads and for coaching startups also. When, when did you start that and why did you start that? So did you notice on your journey that you met a lot of startups or nomads that could need these kind of help? I, I guess I've seen that for well, probably 30 years now. Um, when I started my first travel business in Australia, it was an outback travel company. We would take people out and four-wheel drive into the national parks and go and chase kangaroos and, <laughs> and explore caves and all sorts of things. Um, mm -hmm. We we realised that um, as small operators, it was difficult to to compete with the with the major players, particularly international. So we created an association, and we, uh -huh. we basically started helping each other grow our client base and, and get better at our business. So I saw that many years ago, and it worked really well. As a as a group, you could get great discounts and things like that. And we've used the same principles ever since. Um, I've always liked helping businesses. I'm a, a chartered accountant by my training, so I'm a high-level training in, in business. And I like, I guess from all of my international travel, to sort of help people grow internationally because often it's easier to find customers in another part of the world than what's immediately around you, particularly if you've got something a little bit 
So without maybe getting too much in advisory yet, do you have any advices for people out there if they want to start their own business? Like what comes to your mind, what is the most important steps? Uh, the most important thing is to commit, to <laughs> it up and make it happen. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not quite like just applying for a job and applying for 10 jobs and, and picking one up. You actually need to sit down and say, this is where I'm going to send, send my life. And um, you, you've got to work out uh, whether it's a good industry, what price you're going to charge, where you're going to find the customers. There's not that many critical things that needed to get started. Um, you, you don't need a business degree. You don't mm -hmm. need it, and you want to, and you need to want to help clients because at the end of the day, that's all we, we all help people in our business. You know, Nomad Stays helps people. Uh, business with their feet helps people. Everybody helps people, and and people pay you for that. So um, if, if you've got that sort of attitude and you commit and to always getting better, then you're a long way down the, the, the roadway than than just sitting back and waiting for something to land in your lap. Yeah, that's a good, very good advice for people out there. So, do you uh, work with digital nomads uh, a lot? Well, as well, like in. In your, oh, sorry, I missed that, Lena. Do you work with digital nomads as well? Do you have a oh, yes. yeah. lot of nomads you meet yourself? <laughs> I, I guess one of the advantages of some of the work we've been doing is that we've managed to visit over uh, over 60 um, co-working spaces and incubator hubs around four continents in the last couple of years. So we've been situated at some for a while. So you know, here in France, we're yeah. part of an accelerator program. I was down yesterday, about the office is about 20 minutes away, talking with a, a whole lot of startups and founders and early stage businesses. Um, then in, in other places, like we were in uh, Bansko in Bulgaria last year, and uh, it's quite a big nomad community there. It's one of the, the greatest locations in Europe. So wow. to hang out and so, so hanging out and talking to 50 or 100 uh, digital nomads uh, every couple of days is amazing. And, and actually, one of the things that Bansko does really nicely is they have these hot springs. Mm -hmm. Hot springs. So everybody goes and jumps in a hot spring and does business <laughs> bath every week. So oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> So yeah, we we we're constantly talking uh, with with nomads starting up businesses uh, through the groups, uh, through our connections, through the incubator programs that we volunteer at as well. So um, yeah, we, and so for you, past. sorry, there's not a day that goes past without <laughs> uh, talking to somebody with a, a new challenge. Yeah. So. Um, for you, co-working spaces are quite uh, important on, on your travel, right? Yes. Yeah. So do you... Co-working spaces have developed um, a lot in the last couple of years. They've, they've been around in some form or other for, again, many, many decades. But in the last few years, they've started moving into um, business advisory, helping sort of places. And they've developed a local community uh, for the visitors that come into town. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of our favourite places is like co-working Bansko, as mentioned before. Um, they've got an amazing social network and group that meets and talks and, and uh, really strong bonds get created between uh, people that are there. Because they're often in, in the country for a month or, or longer. Uh, yeah. A lot of people have been there for a long time and they're helping people who are there for a short time. 
And uh, since you have traveled so many countries already and you were working um, all the time all along, so um, what were the most problems that you were facing? Like, did you did you find enough co-working spaces to work from everywhere or did you have problems with that or with internet maybe? What did you expect more from the states that you were visiting or what problems did you face? Uh, all of those. <laughs> so, you know, we, we have an operation in the middle of the Sahara, for mm -hmm. instance, where we, we take people out in the, in the sand dunes. But there's really good satellite internet there. The oh, wow. Satellite internet is not so good for video calls, but really good for downloads and uploads. So you've, you've got to adjust. Um, the outback of Australia, it's pretty difficult to get some internet when you think you might get it. And in other times, uh, we were in the middle of, of the... Um, Uh, the desert there one day, and the internet was absolutely fantastic. We'd sit there and watch Netflix uh, in our tent. Yeah. So, so internet is a really big one um, because we all need to get some work done. We all need to service clients, and more so this sort of video calling has become um, important. The other big issue, which prompted the start of Nomad Stays, was the fact that finding something affordable Uh, mm -hmm. when we were traveling, when we wanted to stop for a couple of weeks, we didn't want to be paying 100 euros a night for a hotel room because you, you're just burning through money way too quickly. And you wanted something a bit better than a campsite uh, if the weather turned bad on you or it was getting cold or something. So we I, we started this, this idea of, of talking to the hotels and saying, listen, we want to stay for two weeks. Can we get a special rate? Because um, it looks like you're sort of half empty. And um, we don't want to, we, we're not going to spend two weeks here at full rate. We'd be going somewhere else. But we'd rather stay here and, and help you. So, so we did that with a range of properties. Mm -hmm. And then they realized that it was actually helping their own business because they could have constant income. They could afford to keep their staff there all the time. Um, for these longer stayers. And so they added longer stayers into their short stay business models. And, and that was the start of Nomad Stays. We said, well, if we can do it for, you know, these, these five or ten properties around Australia, we can do it around the world. So we, we went and tested the market with mm -hmm. approaching other people in the world. And um, we found exactly the same response. You know, they said, yeah, we want more people. Longer stays would be even better. Yeah. So we, we went from there. Nice. That's awesome. That's how Nomad Stays got created. That's great to hear. And um, for everyone out there, Nomad Stays Co. is a, a platform for uh, people that can find stays like that for uh, people like Mark, who also <laughs> thought about himself by creating it and um, what he was missing while traveling. So it stays for um, extended periods. You can stay there, work from there. It's a platform where you can find um, stays that are just perfect for digital nomads. Um, so, um, what is uh, one thing that you would recommend every digital nomad on their journey? Well, I guess what we're seeing at the moment is is a, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're identifying with a digital nomad. They're, they might be early in their career, they might be younger people. And they're looking around for something called a digital nomad job. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether this actually exists. There, there are jobs, there are freelancing gigs that you do, and your lifestyle might make you a digital nomad. So you've got to look for a job that actually suits your lifestyle. But to look for a nomad job is going to be really difficult. Uh, but, but looking for any job, whether you're a nomad or not, follows the same procedures. You've, you've got to be out networking, you've got to be talking to people, you've got to be explaining to them how you can help them. Um, uh, and so, you've got to be plugged into agencies if you want to use an agency. So, so you've got to get active to find work, whether it's in your, same, your own hometown or whether it's on the other side of the world. So networking is very important. And networking is super important and so much easier today with all this technology and, and this... What, what platforms do, would you recommend for networking? Uh, which ones don't I recommend? Uh, they <laughs> change um, all the time. 
So if you're, if you're you know, much more business-minded or you're doing mm-hmm. a B2B sort of business um, or you're dealing with other business people, then your, your big ones are LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, they're, for us, they're, they're very good. If you're doing something that appeals to a consumer more often, then we might be looking at uh, something like Facebook. Um, if you're starting to get a little bit more niche, um, so you're into, into, into travel or blogging or copywriting or something, so you're starting to see small groups establish themselves on Instagram, mm-hmm. Pinterest. Pinterest, uh, not so much for social stuff, but it's a good way to profile and, and a whole lot of people that you're not finding in other platforms. Uh, and then, then what we're finding is that groups uh, in WhatsApp and more particularly in Telegram are starting to take off, where they're much more narrowly focused. So the, you'll find groups of digital nomads on Telegram, and you'll find groups of digital software developers on, on Telegram. So it might not be the wide range that you would see on Facebook or Twitter, but it's much deeper. And you, depending on what you're looking for, what you're, what you're targeting, you may find the right clients are going to be in a deeper, more intensive group than a broad brush general group. Great. So, um, and for this year, um, like, hopefully things are going to be better in the travel industry and people will be able to travel more more with freedom, like when COVID is going to slowly disappear. So what are you um, expecting for this year? What do you think will happen with the travel industry? I, uh, there's a couple of key things that are happening. Um, 2020 was a big year of fear. So people froze, they stopped what they were doing, and they, they took time to work out what's going on. 2021 is the year that we're learning to live again with things like COVID. But, you know, it's, it's not the only pandemic going around. There's all sorts of diseases and things out there. But people are starting to realise that actually this is normal. It's normal to have uh, a little bit of risk. And there are ways that you can prepare yourself and ensure yourself and look after yourself. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're now returning to travel. I, I think uh, something like 70% of the world is currently open for travel, uh, which is really quite good. Now, it might be a little bit harder or different. I think the word is different from what you did two years ago, but it's still possible. So there's some new learnings about how we're going to travel because people are maybe doing a little bit more overland, a little bit more self-contained car, van-based travel. Uh, less aeroplanes. The aeroplane flights might be a bit more point to point rather than long haul. Mm-hmm. So we're changing, but we're we're starting to travel again. So I think acceptance of that is this year. I think we're going to see this um, some level of improved uh, passport control occurring, which which is got to be your vaccination certificates or it's a it's a catalogue of your tests that you've done. Looks like testing is the new norm. Testing, mm-hmm. testing, testing. Um, crossing borders, getting on planes. So keeping track of those those tests and results to allow you to get onto aeroplanes is is one of the likely things to, to come. Um, that should get a little bit easier as different countries around the world governments start hum- harmonising their their exchange of information, and accepting what's going on. For many years, we've had yellow certificates that said we've had yellow fever um, vaccinations or malaria vaccinations that we've used across borders for certain countries. Well, I think that style of thing will... will Yeah. Um, And I think people will get back to travelling because it's a natural part of life. Totally. We we will. (laughs) (laughs) And and what, uh, personally, do you expect from this year? Where where do you want to travel next? Where do you want to go? seven countries last year, 2020, and it wasn't enough. <laughs> We'd like to do at least seven this year. Um, wow, great. I, 
I would love to personally get back to uh, visit Africa again, uh, particularly the north of Africa, and catch up with some, some friends and explore some places I haven't done before. There's some uh, countries, even in Europe, I haven't been to, so uh, I'd like to explore Montenegro a little bit more, Portugal um, a little bit more. I'd like to get out and visit some of our stays that are signing up all around the place. Look, look at these um, Greek islands. I haven't been to most of these Greek islands that are starting yeah. to sign up, so I'd love to get to the Greek islands. Um, so I guess we're talking about relatively close to Europe that we would be looking at. Um, getting home to Australia, probably a write-off for another year, but the country's uh, going to have hard borders closed for quite some time. Um, a number of the Asian countries are, are still quite locked up and not quite sure when they're going to open uh, as well. Um, yeah, I know Philippines has got internal borders pretty hard. I'd love to explore the Philippines. but Can you put your mic up a little bit more? <laughs> I think it might be uh, second half of 2021 before the Philippines opens. Ah, okay. So get to explore that. Yeah. And you're, you're traveling with your dog, that's correct? Mm. <laughs> uh, that's so cute. Dog, his name's Dakar, uh, and he's sitting next to me, looking at me. And, oh, <laughs> come over and have a chat now. <laughs> <laughs> if he could. <laughs> he brought him from Australia. He's visited uh, 11 or 12 countries himself now, so uh, he can't wait to discover another country. Wow, that's great. That's great. So he were going to be at the Greek island soon. I hope so. <laughs> uh, we, we were supposed to be there last year. We were we got to jump on a, a friend's yacht and sail there, but... Uh, uh, actually, his, his wife broke her ankle. That wasn't COVID that got in the way. He oh. had to stay home and look after his wife. But uh, oh. hopefully this year, uh, Greek islands it is. Awesome, awesome. That sounds so great. Like an adventurous dog with you. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you very much, Mark. That was very interesting getting to know your life and where have you been already and what you're doing um, business-wise. And... Um, yeah, very happy to have you here. Um, maybe you can tell the people where they can find you else at then and Nomad States Co. Okay. Your business. Um, obviously, you can you can come to us and visit us Nomad States Co. Um, but uh, my personal uh, handle is I Mark Phillips. I have the, the letter I as an in internet I, and you'll find me uh, on almost every platform out there. Um, and if you're looking specifically for some of the business mentoring, uh, have a look at Business in Bare Feet, uh, the, the account I'm dialing in from today. And with Business in Bare Feet, we, we have a group of about 30 mentors spread around the, the world, all people that have started and grown businesses that are now helping uh, young people, younger people, Great. and do successful stuff now. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good day, Mark. <laughs>